Okay, so let's start with the um, possessive, possessive adjectives. Um, here I prepare these, uh, you know by my method uh, at this point, that uh, when I make a cross like here, this uh, uh, corner here is uh, masculine singular. This corner here is feminine singular. This corner here is masculine plural, and this corner here is feminine plural. And you know, I don't stay to write it everywhere. Here it is the same masculine singular, feminine singular, masculine plural, feminine plural, masculine singular, feminine singular, masculine plural, feminine plural, and so on. The corner always are this. So let's see the uh, possessive uh, in Italian. Uh, basically, um, in Italian, the possessive always want the article. Here it is. What that means? That in English you say, for example, my. Okay. In Italian, in instead, you don't say my book, but you say the. I the name I do, I do the name. Okay, they add the article, the possessive. There are a few exceptions that we see later, we're going to see later. But anyway, this is the characteristic of the possessive. In fact, my book in Italian translated will be il mio. So, technically, the possessive is only this, mio, libro means book. This is the determinative article, this is the masculine article, the. So, you see, in Italian, they use the possessive with the article. They say, they don't say my cat, they say the, my cat. They don't say your car, they say the. Your car. So this is the characteristic. Uh, so this is the characteristic uh, all of the uh, Italian possessive. Now let's learn how to use the possessive correctly. Okay. Here I draw this because the way they show you the possessive in the books is very confusing to me. Okay. Here you have two parts. This one at the top, you see you have all those cross, you know, I always use the cross, I explain you already, because every corner represents gender and number, masculine singular, feminine singular, masculine plural, and feminine plural, you got that. Here at the top, this one is the subject, okay? Subject. I think it's spelled subject like that, okay? So here at the top, you have all the subject. Basically, who is the subject? Is the, the owner. If I say um, her umbrella, her is the subject, is the person who own the umbrella. Okay, so let's call it here at the top, this one written here at the top, this one at the top of those all those crosses, let's call it the subject. The subject or the owner is the person that own something. Instead, here in those four part of the cross, we have what? We have the own things. On, that was basically is own. If I say my cat, okay, my cat, who is the subject, who is the owner, the owner is io, is I, because I own the cat, the cat instead is the things that is, so okay, to build up the, uh, let's, let's try, let's try some translation, let's translate my cat, okay, how you translate my cat in Italian, using this, uh, the possessive correctly, First thing, you have to think, who is the subject? Who, who is the owner? Who owns the cat? Answer, I. 
is I. I in Italian correspond to the pronoun subject io. It means that you gotta take this cross. And so when you take this cross, you have to ask the, the second question. The second question is, what is the gender and the number of the own thing, the cat? The cat is masculine singular because in Italian will be, you have, you have to translate. The translation of cat is gatto and you need to know from previous lesson and when it finish in O is masculine singular. This is the corner of masculine singular. So you know that the translation, correct translation for my cat is il mio gatto. Okay, so basically we um, have to ask two questions. Uh, number one, who is the owner? And number two, what is the gender and number of the own object? It looks like complicated, but now with an example, you see that it's easy. For example, we did the example, my cat. Let's do the example, our dogs, okay? So let's translate our dogs. We have a lot of dogs. First, who is the owner? The owner is our our correspond to the Italian subject. So ours is we, right? This is the, the owner. We are the owners of the dogs. So in Italian, we correspond to noi. So basically we have to go here. We choose the cross. So this is our cross because the owner is noi. Let's write here the translation. Io is in English I. Tu in English is you. Lui, lei, in English is he and she. In English, noi is we. Boy is you, plural, so I say you, like you guys. And loro is they. These are the translation you saw in the previous lesson. So we have a number one, we have the cross, that is one, okay? Now we have to decide the gender, the gender and the number of the own things. We own dogs. So dogs is masculine plural. In Italian, dog is a cane. But because they are many, you should know, you should know that the translation is a cane because the plural, you made it like that, is in the lesson uh, one. Okay, so cane is masculine plural because cane is masculine, but we have many. So the corner for uh, masculine plural is this one, okay? Because uh, this is a masculine singular in all the cross work like that. Feminine singular, masculine plural, and feminine plural. So our dog is i nostri. Cani. This is the right translation of our dogs with using those two. And it's important to use to, those two because otherwise it, um, it's very confusing. Uh, possessive in Italian are confusing because they work differently than in English. I'm going to explain you what I mean. Let's do another example. Let's say um, her friend. Okay, and also, let's do also her friends, plural. So, her friend, only one, and her friends, plural. So, first, who is the subject? Who is the owner of the friends? Even if it's nice to say like that about friends, but who is the subject? Who is the owner? Her, okay? You know that her, in Italian, is lei. So pick up the cross, number one, go immediately to pick up the cross. This is the cross. So you don't move from this cross. Now you have to choose one of those according to the gender and the number of the own object. So here she owns one friend, only one. So if it's one, it's singular. Friend, you know, is masculine and in Italian is amico, okay? 
So basically is here, masculine in the corner of masculine singular. The right translation is il, il, suo, basically what there is here, il suo, il suo amico. Okay. Now let's see the second sentence, her friends, plural. Because the owner is the same, we don't change the cross, it's still the same cross because this is the cross that you use every time that the subject is lui or lei, he or she. So it's the same cross, it's just going to change inside here because it changed the number. So friends, okay, one friend is amico, is this word, instead plural is amici, this is is. is. Uh, the plural of amico is amici and is masculine plural. Masculine plural is down here, is this one, is suoi. So now you know the right translation is uh, i suoi amici. Our, uh, our house. Our car, uh, and then we do also our houses and our cars. Same at the plural, okay? So, our house, let's start with this one. Who is the owner? Our is we. We are the owner, is we, is the um, subject pronoun we. In Italian, we correspond to noi. Okay, so we have the first step. This is our cross. And after we found the cross according to the owner, we don't move from there. This is the right cross. Now we have to choose which one of those four inside the cross apply. So we know that the translation of house in Italian is casa. Is only one, okay? Is only one, so we know it's singular, but the translation in Italian is casa. We know from the previous lesson that when a noun in Italian end in a is feminine, so we know that is feminine singular. The corner of a feminine singular is this one, so this is the right translation. The tra right translation for our house will be la. Just write what is written there, la nostra casa. And we got this first one. Now let's translate this one, our car, okay? So who is uh, the owner? Is we. It's the same cross as before because it's the same owner, it's still this one. This is noi, that means we in Italian. So this is the owner and we use this cross. Now we have to translate the word car. The word car in Italian is a macchina. That is a very strange noun because they call the car machine. Anyway, you should know from previous lesson that when a noun ends in a, in Italian is a feminine. This rule that when ending I is feminine doesn't work all the time, but almost. Anyway, you see that in lesson one. So because the ending A is feminine, is one, because it's only one car, so it's feminine singular. And we go here, it's the same as before. Is this corner, the corner of feminine singular. So the right translation for this sentence is la nostra. Macchina. Let's translate our houses. We are many, and here, sorry, I forget an S, our cars. Okay, our is a we, because the owner is noi, it doesn't change, it's the same cross. Now, we translate houses. So, houses, the plural of casa, is in Italian case, okay? And this is feminine plural and is here. So the right translation for our houses is le nostre 
case. One more, we translate our cars. So, who is the owner? We. We learned that. It's still this cross. So, now we have to decide the gender and number of cars. We know that the translation for cars is machina and in A, so it's feminine. Now we make it plural. The plural of machina is um, machine. Ma -chi -ne. So, ending in A here is feminine plural, so it will be this one, the corner of feminine plural. So, the right translation for our cars will be le nostre macchine. Basically, you just need to practice, because this is a come easy, will come easily when you practice. And, uh, you know, um, in the exercise, do the exercise because after this lesson there will be the exercise and the exercise that help you a lot. Let's do another couple of examples. Let's say their dog. Their, oh, the, let, let's change. Let's say their cat that we already do the dog. And then the plural also their dogs. And let's say, um, I don't know, uh, my, okay, and my, okay, so their cat, first sentence, who is the owner? They. They in Italian correspond to loro, so this is the right cross, because the owner is they, that in Italian is loro. Now you have to decide the gender and number of the word cat. In Italian, the translation for cat is gatto, and in O, so is masculine singular. The corner of masculine singular inside your cross is il loro, so this is the right translation, il loro gatto. That means they are cat. Let's do this second one. Oh gosh, I really love dogs. I wanted to write cats and I wrote dogs. Okay, I love cats too. I love all animals. Okay, so they are cats. Okay. First, choose the cross. First thing first, choose the right cross. This is the first thing you do. Look at the subject, the owner, their. Who is there? They, that in Italian correspond to loro. So we are still in this cross. Now we go inside our cross to choose the gender and number of the own things. The translation for cats at the plural is gatti. Okay? And you know it's masculine plural because in fact gatto was masculine singular. Masculine plural is down here. So the right translation for their cats is i loro gatti. This is it. Now let's go with those two. And is my book. First thing first, choose the cross. Who is the owner? Who is the subject? Who is the one who owns the book? Is I. Is me. So I is here. In Italian, I correspond to io. So this is your cross, and you did the first operation. Second operation, inside the cross, find the gender and number. Translate this, book, this word. Book in Italian is libro, okay? And because libro end in no, in, uh, with the letter O, you should know that is masculine singular. Where is the corner of masculine singular inside your cross? Is this one. There you go. The right translation for my book is il mio libro. Let's do the plural. Here, the owner didn't change. It just changed the number of book, but the owner doesn't change. It's still me. Because it's still me, I'm still using the same cross, the one that represented the owner, io, I. Now we change the number of books. Here it was one, and now they became many. So the plural of book, libro, is libri, 
and we know is masculine singular because all nouns in Italian have a gender. Libro will masculine, so the plural is masculine as well. But it's no singular, it's masculine because there are many. So we go in the corner of a masculine plural inside our cross. Masculine plural corner is this one, okay? This one. So the right translation for my books will be I, I, A, Libri. And now, last things, uh, then you, you're going to have the video of the exercise, but last thing, I want to read them with you, okay? So let's start uh, here at the top with this one. After me, repeat. Il mio. La mia. I miei. Le mie. Il tuo, la tua, i tuoi, le tue, il suo, la sua, i suoi. Le sue, il nostro, la nostra, i nostri, le nostre, il vostro, la vostra, i vostri, le vostre, il loro, la loro, i loro, le loro. Ok, so you may ask why uh, I stay here to draw all these uh, uh, cross uh, with... Uh, the owner that uh, all this method that I made up because there are a lot of confusion because the possessive works differently than in English and here I wrote it so now I tell you what that means basically it means that in Italian the gender and number of the possessive match the object with its own Instead, and it doesn't match the owner like in English. They work differently. I give you an example to let you understand. Let's say his okay, uh, umbrella. His umbrella and her, her umbrella. Okay, those two sentences. So let, let's, let's translate them here, okay? So first of all, who is the owner? He and she. And here is the this, uh, cross. So um, here, uh, umbrella, we translated in Italian, umbrella is ombrello and is masculine because the ending O. Word ending in O, nouns ending in O in Italian are masculine. It's only one, so it's masculine singular. So this is the right translation. It will be, his umbrella will be, il suo ombrello. Okay. And instead, her umbrella is still in the same cross. Umbrello is still masculine singular. So is still this one masculine singular. So the translation for her umbrella will be il suo ombrello. See? It doesn't change. Why? Because in English the possessive is chosen according to the owner. In English the possessive uh, is chosen 
according to the gender and number of the person who owns something. Instead, in Italian, it, work, it works the other way around. The possessive is chosen according to the gender and number, not of the owner, like in English, but of the thing that is owned. In fact, let's say that these uh, her and his, whoever they are, they own something that is feminine. Like, for example, let's say, um, Borsa. Borsa is a purse and the translation is in Italian Borsa, okay? Ending in A is feminine. So let's say what will be her borsa. Her borsa will be la sua borsa. Okay? His borsa of him will be still la sua borsa. You see here it was il suo. Instead, here it change is la sua. Why? Because in Italian, the possessive match, matches the gender and the number of the own things. And, you know, there is a lot of confusion because uh, usually um, uh, English native speaker choose the gender and number of the possessive according to the gender of the person who owns something. And that would become confusing because they, are, they, they think this way. It is wrong. You choose inside the cross those four corners that are the ones that show the gender and number only uh, respect to the object that is owned. It doesn't matter, it does not matter the gender and the number of the person who own. It doesn't matter, it's still the, the gender and number is only uh, refer, refers, only refers to the own things. Now let's see those two exceptions. So this is a exception. In Italian, the nouns. Uh, describing relatives who are relatives brother sister uh, son uh, cousin all people of your family okay only when expressed at the singular don't take the article okay this is no very important i tell you later basically what that means i told you that in italian the characteristic of the italian possessive is that they always use the article for example if i say my friend this is my friend in uh, english written in english in italian we won't be my friend we'll be the my friend il that means the mio amico okay the possessive takes the article, but there is an exception. Sometimes it does not take the article. When? When I'm talking about people of my family, relatives. Look, if instead of my friend that is not a relative, is a person that is not related to me by blood, if I say instead of my friend, my brother, my brother, my brother is my family. So, because of my family, I don't translate il mio fratello, ma only mio fratello. See? The article is missing. In Italian, the possessive always take the article at exception of when they describe people of your family. They don't take the article. My father, it will be mio padre without the article in front of it because is a person of my family, is a relative. But that exception apply only at the singular because if I use the plural, it's a very complicated use, it's really silly, I know. Um, I, I was saying that this exception apply only when the relative is singular, is only one. Because if, for example, instead of saying my brother, I say my brothers, 
many, plural. In this case, the article is there. I, miei, fratelli. Okay, this is a bad example because I don't say my fathers. I don't have many fathers. And at least, let's say, for example, here instead of my father, let me write something else. For example, um, let's, let me write uh, mia figlia, okay? Figlia is daughter. Is my daughter, so is a person of my family, so it doesn't take the article, it's only mia, it's only my, okay? If instead I want to say daughters, let's say I have many little girls, I have many daughters, so I use the plural, in this case it does take the article, it will be, this is the article, le mie article, possessive, le mie figlie. So, Let's say one second, all the possessive in Italian takes, take the article, right? With the exception of relative, people of the family. In this case, uh, the possessive doesn't take the article. This is the exception, but only when the people of your family is only one person. When instead there are many, this exception doesn't apply. And here we learn some uh, vocabulary, okay? So we put, I put in, all, in order to memorize this uh, rule, I put here all people of your family. So after me, madre, mother, padre, father, mamma, mom, papà, Daddy, figlio, son, figlia, daughter, fratello, brother, sorella, sister, moglie, wife, marito, husband, suocero, Father in law, suocera, mother in law, cugino, cousin, cugina, cousin female, nonno, grandfather, nonna, grandmother, bisnonno, grand grandfather. Is nonna, grand grandmother, trisavolo. Uh, I think is great grandmother, great grandfather. Trisavola is great grandmother. Basically, is the mom of the mom of your mom three times. So this is our trisavola, and at the masculine ending in o is the dad of your dad, of your dad, three times. Then we have nipote. Nipote is nephew, okay? This word has a characteristics. This word, nipote, has two meanings in English. Nipote refer to um, auntie, like, for example, or uncle. Um, for my uncle, okay, so for my uncle, I am his nipote, but I am also a nipote for my grandma. So, a grandchild, this uh, nipote translates grandchild and nephew. It translate, translates both. Cognato. Brother in law, cognata, sister in law, zio, uncle, zia, auntie, genero, son in law, nuora, daughter in law, 
Okay, so here we are. I wanted to show you something. For some reason, even if Trisavolo and Trisavola are relatives, because my uh, great grandfather and my great grandmother are my family, but uh, he takes, uh, uh, they don't, they are considering no part of the family. In fact, they take the articles, only this. Then I wanted to show you this one that uh, uh, is, a, is a word that we didn't look up and it means my parents. My parents is i miei genitori. How you can see here are all singular, they don't take the articles, you see, no articles because they are relatives, people of your family. Here, with only the exception, like I told you, of Trisavolo, Trisavola, you see no article. Instead, here, where they are plural, they all have the article. So, possessive in Italian takes the articles all the time, with the exception of people of your family, when they are singular, so only one. For Italians, according to these rules uh, of the of gram, those grammar rules, what happen? Uh, step uh, people, um, you know, that are not related with you with blood, they don't follow these rules. For example, if I say my brother, it will be mio fratello. Because it's singular and because it's a relative, it doesn't take the article. But if I say um, my stepbrother, in this case, it does take the article. It will be il mio fratellastro. So stepbrother doesn't follow this rule, it's like it's not considered a, a real relative because it's no blood related. Let's do another example. If I say my sister doesn't take the article because it's a relative and it's only one, so it will be mia sorella. But if I say my stepsister, in this case doesn't apply, it does take the article, it's considered no really people of your family. La mia sorellastra, sorellastra, sorellastra means uh, step sister. So step sister, this one is step sister, this is step brother, step sister and step brother. Let's see also my step mother. Uh, if I say um, uh, my mother, it will be mia madre and it doesn't take the article because it's the, this exception that I told you and repeat you many, many times. If instead we say um, my stepmother, it takes the article la because I told you for Italian, or at least according to those grammatical rules, is like if those people is no real part of your family. They are not really blood related. So my uh, stepmother is la mia matrigna. La mia matrigna. Okay, stepmother, see the difference? Let's do the last one that is a uh, uh, stepfather. So if it was my father, no my stepfather, it would be mio padre. Mio padre, that he doesn't take the article because it's part of my family and he's only one. Let's see instead my stepfather. It will be il mio Oh, sorry, il mio patrigno, patrigno. And the same, the same is for uh, the godfather. Uh, godfather is, uh, uh, godfather translate uh, uh, padrino and he is not considered really blood related. In fact, he takes the article, il mio 
padrino. And the godmother is la mia madrina. It's easy to confuse them. Padrino is godfather. Patrigno is stepfather. Madrina is godmother. Matrigna is stepmother. And they both take the articles because they are not really blood related. Last things to tell you. There is another exception. Mamma and papa. Mamma and papa is very familiar. It's different than madre. Mother is different than mom. Like father is different than daddy. Because mother and father are more formal. Instead, mom and dad are very familiar. For those two, mamma e papà, you can do both. You can do whatever you like. You can say mia mamma without the article o la mia mamma with the article. Same for daddy, papà. You can say mio papà without the article. Or you can say il mio papà with the article. So only for those two, sorry, only one P. Only for those two, mamma e papà, you can do both ways. Okay, so now let's go with the adjectives. The adjectives basically describe the characteristics of noun. So the sun is warm. Warm is an adjective because describe a noun. The noun is the sun. Uh, the table is uh, short. Uh, short is an adjective because it describes the table. So adjective describe a noun. The different than adverbs that I'm going to tell you later. Adverbs instead, they don't describe a noun like the adjective. The adverbs describe an action, a verb. I eat well. Well is an adverb because it describes the action of eating. But I'm going to tell you this later. Um, so don't worry. So this uh, is the pattern number one, pattern number two, and pattern number three. If you watch the lesson number one about noun, are the same pattern, but is missing one. Uh, the pattern that with the noun is a accent, a accent, a accent, a accent, it doesn't work for adjectives. It works only for nouns. Okay, so that's why it's missing one. Let's try some adjectives. This is about, uh, um, first of all, to get some vocabulary because you need some vocabulary. And then is a review about how to match the adjectives with the gender and the number of nouns. Let's see that. First of all, repeat after me so we learn some vocabulary. Alto. Grande. Oh, let me say what that means. Alto, tall, grande, big, divertente, funny, grasso, fat, ricco, rich, allegro, content, cattivo, bad or evil, giovane, young, calmo, calm, bello, beautiful or handsome, dinamico, dynamic, basso, short, piccolo, small, Noioso, boring. Magro, skinny. Povero, poor. Triste, sad. Buono, good. Vecchio, old. Nervoso, nervous. Brutto, ugly. Pigro, lazy. 
disinvolto, care free, cortese, polite, ingenuo, naif, prudente, cautious, intelligente, intelligent, sincero, sincere, generoso, generous, onesto, honest, gentile, polite, gentle, simpatico, it means someone that everybody likes, I don't, you don't have this adjective in uh, English, simpatico and antipatico, Simpatico means someone that is uh, easy going, that is easy to get along with, uh, is uh, a nice person, is a beautiful person. Antipatico is the contrary, someone that is uneasy, someone that gets mad, it's difficult to get along with that person, it's, uh, it's, no, it's annoying, antipatico. So let's say timido, timid. Scortese is rude, you see cortese was polite, scortese just by adding an S make the contrary means rude, furbo it means clever, audace it means courageous, someone that is, uh, is very courageous is the contrary of timid, stupido, stupid, bugiardo is a liar, egoista, egoist. Uh, disonesto, dishonest, sgarbato, rude, and antipatico, I already told you, a person with whom it's difficult to get along. Okay, so now let's see some uh, example about to match the adjectives with the noun. For example, let's say Maria uh, is tall, okay? Maria è that is the uh, verb to be, means is, and then we have to say that she's tall. Let's look for the uh, adjective tall, here it is, alto. This uh, ending in O and A, it means masculine, belong to this group. So Maria is a woman, feminine singular, so we have to choose this designance. Maria è alta. If instead of Maria, it would have been, um, I don't know, Marco. Marco is a guy, usually a noun sending in O are masculine. È alto. Why? Because it's masculine singular, so it takes this one. If we say um, the girls are tall, okay, the girls is le ragazze, because they are many, is feminine, sorry, two Z, is feminine plural, double Z, it's feminine plural ending in E, so you have to change the verb, because they, you don't say uh, the girls is, you say the girls are, so this is transla translate is, if you want to translate are, you have to use sono, so the girls are tall, le ragazze sono alte, ok? Alte is here, feminine plural. The boys are tall, i ragazzi, ragazzi sono, because it's, it's plural, they are alti, because masculine plural is here. So this is the way you match the adjective. Basically, first of all, you have to understand if the adjective is follow this pattern, this pattern, or this pattern. Then you have to understand the gender and the number of the nouns the adjective uh, refers to. And the adjective takes the same gender and number of the nouns it's describing, because this is, is the way you match it. So all the... Um, those uh, adjectives ending in O or A follow this first pattern, that is the most common, the majority of words are here. Instead, uh, the one, the adjectives ending in E, 
Like, for example, triste, follow this one. Triste means sad. I don't like it. I don't like this. It's the only one that I ever hear ending in A. Okay, so now let's use another one. Let's use intelligent. Intelligent. So let's do the same that we did before. Maria è intelligente. Intelligente. I write them, then I explain you because otherwise it became too long. Marco è intelligente. Le ragazze, le ragazze, the girls, le ragazze sono intelligenti. And i ragazzi sono intelligenti. So we do, we did uh, adjectives that belongs to the second group. And I repeat you, they are more rare. The majority of adjectives and nouns follow this pattern. I, I will say at least 80% or even more. So here instead, Maria è, because è means is, sono means are, intelligente. You see in this second pattern, you have both masculine and feminine ending in E, and instead the plural, both masculine and feminine ending in E. So it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a woman with this pattern, when it's singular, only one, end with E, intelligente, intelligente. And when they are plural, they both end with E. So le ragazze, the girls, are intelligenti, i ragazzi sono intelligenti. Now, let's go with the last one that is very rare. There are just a few. Here we have one, egoista, it means selfish, okay? So, Maria è egoista because is feminine singular and here feminine singular and in a, a masculine singular as well. So Marco è is egoista. Le ragazze, the girls, sono feminine plural egoiste. And i ragazzi, the boys, are, sono, masculine plural, egoisti. Ok, here are rule that is very useful grammatically in any language you study, even in English. So, the difference between an adjective and an adverb, ok? An adjective refer to a noun. Instead, an adverb refer to a verb or an action. Let's see some example. For example, io, hidden, subject usually hidden, io, mangio, molta, pasta. Io, id, mangio, molto. Ok, this molto, that means a lot, molto means a lot, molto. This is one of the ones that are tricky because it can be an adjective or an adverb. And you have to decide in the sentence if it's an adjective or an adverb, because that way you see how it works. So in this case, molto is an adjective because it describes pasta. It refers to pasta. Pasta is a noun. I eat a lot of what? Pasta. It refers to pasta. Because pasta is feminine in ending a, so the adjective is feminine as well. Instead, here, I eat a lot, molto, doesn't refer to a noun, refer to the action of eating a lot. 
This is the difference. Adverbs don't have a gender and number. Is, when is an adverb, you always end in O. Okay, it doesn't change. Sometimes there are adverbs that end in A, but they don't change. They don't have a gender and number. You don't say multa. Molto, molta, molti, molte. When he changed gender and number is only when he's an adjective that describes a noun. Instead, when it is, is a, Instead, when he describes a verb, an action, so is an adverb, it doesn't have a gender and number, it stays always the same. Okay, ho tanta fame. Tanta, tanto, tanta is sometimes an adverb and sometimes uh, an adjective. And it means a lot, like molto is another one. And then instead, here we have also bene. Bene is always an adverb, is never, never, never an adjective, only an adverb. Okay, so here ho tanta fame. Fame is a noun, is a hunger. I have a lot of hunger. I'm very hungry. I want to eat. I'm very hungry. Fame is the noun and is hunger, okay? I have a lot of hunger. This tanta, I have a lot of what? I have a lot of hunger. So this tanta refer to a noun that is hunger. Because it refer to a noun is an adjective. Instead, it match, it change. He has the feminine. Because originally will be tanto, but he has the feminine because uh, fame is feminine, belonging to the second group. You remember the one that does the A, A, E. Ok, instead here mangio tanto, mangio tanto o mangio tanto bene, this is in Italia, I eat very well in Italy. So this tanto, I eat a lot, it doesn't refer to uh, a noun, you see that from the context of the sentence, it refers to the action of eating, so it's an adverb. When, when you are referring to a noun and you want to say is good or is bad, if you refer to a noun, you have to use the adjective because na for nouns, adjective. For verb, adverbs. Let's say l'inquinamento, the pollution. This is inquinamento is the Italian word for pollution. L'inquinamento è cattivo. Ok? And then you want to say um, la pizza è buona. Then here instead in the adverb uh, you're going to say uh, inquinare to pollute, inquinare, è male, ok? Mangiare, to eat pizza, mangiare, la pizza, è bene. So you have cattivo, you have buono, you have male, you have bene. Ok, this, cattivo e buona are adjectives. So those, male and bene are adverbs. I heard sometimes people to say la pizza è bene, la pizza è male. Male and bene are adverbs. You never use them to refer to a noun. You use them only to refer to an action. To pollute. This is, is an action. Verbs, action, and in are, ere, ire. Inquinare is no a noun. It's a verb. It means to pollute. So because it's a verb, is an action, they, you have to use the adverb. Bene also is an adverb. Here, bene doesn't refer to la pizza, refer to eat la pizza. 
to the action of eating the pizza. So remember this if you want to uh, talk correctly Italian. Male and bene, good and bad, are only, only, only adverbs. You use them only with verbs, only with action, never, never with nouns. With nouns, if you want to say referring to a noun that is good or bad, you got to use an adjective, cattivo or buona. Uh, you have two ways to ask what time is it. One is che ora è, what time is it? And the second one is what time what hours because ore means hours we use the expression hours what hour hours are okay che ora è e che ore sono this use the plural and this more common like i wrote here so when you give the answer and you say uh, it's uh, one o'clock, it's, first of all, we don't have o'clock, so you don't say o'clock in Italian, you don't say it's one o'clock, you just say it's one, you don't say it's two o'clock, you say, you just say it's two, so we don't have this. Eventually, if you want to say sharp, you can say in punto, in punto means exactly, sharp, but you don't have two. Okay, answer. When you answer it's one, only when it's one, one o'clock uh, and one uh, thirty, whatever, only it's uh, only when is one, you gotta use is because is is the singular, so is refer to one. So only when is one o'clock, you use e, e luna. For all the other numbers that refer to hours, you use sono le, okay? So let's say some example. What time is it? It's one, è luna. Everything else takes sono le. Che ore sono? It's two, sono le due. It's three, sono le tre. It's four o'clock, sono le quattro. Sono le cinque, le sei, le sette, and so on. Okay? The numbers are in the lesson number two. You have to, to know the numbers to say the hours because you need to know this is due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So basically, uh, I suggest you to use this that is more common. Che ore sono? Answer, only when it's one o'clock, you say è luna. For all the other times that is not one o'clock, sono le. Okay, okay, so uh, che ore sono? Let's say that you don't want to say one o'clock. You want to say one and a half, uh, one thirty, one fifteen, uh, uh, whatever. You want to add something. Okay, so here is, uh, what time is it? Che ore sono? It's one and a half. È luna e mezza. Mezza means half. And there is a particularity. You have to add and. E is the conjunction uh, and. Because in Italian, you don't say it's one thirty. You say it's one and thirty. You don't say it's four 20, like you do in English. In Italian, you have to say is 4 and 20. You have to add the conjunction in the middle that in Italian is E. So, sono le due e mezza. Is 2 and a half. Sono le tre e un quarto. It's 3 and a quarter. Sono le sei e tre quarti. It's six and, you always use and, three quarters. And then you can just add uh, the number for the minutes. For example, it's eight and forty-five minutes. Sono le otto e, for, uh, sorry, <laughs> sono le otto e 
45 minuti. It's 11.20. In Italian sounds like sono le 11 e 20. Last one, it's 4 and it's 4, 5. Sono le 4 e 5. You can add the minuti if you want. It's like to say it's 4 and 5 minutes. But you don't have to. You can do both ways. So here I put it, here don't. Do the, the way you like the most. You can say sono le 4 e 5. It's understood that you are talking about minutes. In Italian, we use military time. Uh, you can use it. You don't, it's, it's not an obligation. But they use it in uh, official contests. For example, if you sign a contract, there will be, if there is written the time for something, it will be in military time because it's official, it's in, in a contract. So if you sign an insurance contract, for example, uh, instead to say uh, 11 p.m., they're going to say uh, 23 p.m. in military time because it's more formal. So you can use both way. Uh, here there is the example of military time that, like I tell you, is more formal. And this means sono le tredici. It's 13. 13 is one, is one o'clock. So you have to review military time. So military time is go from one to 12, okay? And then instead to say 1 p.m., I say 13. Instead to say 2 p.m., you say 14. And you go on until 24. So Google military time and you see what it is. Uh, for example, this is only military time, are examples. Sono le 14 e mezza. And review the number. This is, is the number 14, this is the number 13. Sono le 14 e mezza means is 14 and a half. 14 is 2 p.m. Sono quasi, this is something I didn't tell you, I wanted to introduce. Quasi, it means almost. So, sono quasi le 19 e un quarto. It's almost 19 and a quarter. 19 is 7 p.m. But this is military time, it's no Italian. <laughs> Go look by yourself. Sono quasi le 20. It's almost 20, 8 p.m. Sono le 17 e 15. Remember, always add E between the hours and the minutes. Are 17 and 15, 5, 15. Here there are two more expressions. Is noon and is midnight. In front of those two, you don't use sono, you use è. If you want to say, what time is it? It's noon, è mezzogiorno. What time is in? Uh, what, sorry, what time is it? It's midnight, è mezzanotte. Okay, almost done. I told to you about military time. You can use military time uh, in Italian. And they usually do, they use it in uh, um, official contest or, you know, something that is uh, more formal. But, uh, like I told you, you can use military time, but it's not a must. So, if you don't want to use, we don't have IMPM, we don't have, this is, uh, is English. So, if you don't want to use military time, I, how can you distinguish between the hours uh, a.m. and the hours p.m.? Here, how you do it uh, using uh, adding to the time del mattino, that means in the morning, del pomeriggio, in the afternoon, di sera, in the evening, and di notte in the night. Let's see those examples. For example, che ore sono? This is always the same question. You already know. Che ore sono? What time is it? Okay. Answer. Sono le sette 
del mattino. It's seven in the morning. Sono le cinque di sera. It's five in the evening. Sono le nove di sera. It's nine in the evening. Sono le quattro del pomeriggio. It's four in the afternoon. Sono le quattro del mattino. It's four in the morning. Or you can say it's four in the night. You, here, here I put it. It's the same. That's why I was saying you can use them inter interchangeably. It's four in the night or it's four in the morning is the same. So, sono le quattro del mattino o sono le quattro di notte. Sono le due del pomeriggio. It's two in the afternoon. Sono le due di notte. It's two of the night, in the night. We made it. Lesson four is over. See you next time. Ciao.